Hi, and welcome to the Players Club presented by Pepsi, a show brought to you to give you behind the scenes look from those who know it best, the players. I'm Renee Washington, joined by Washington football team star in studio this week, D'Angelo Hall. D'Angelo, nice What's to have you on? back. Good to be back. And then we've got Cowboy Killer, former Ooh. Washington football team Ooh. wide receiver, Santana Moss. I feel like I'm doing like an I intro just, here. I like the Welcome. introduction. So you can keep that going. <laughs> yeah, Cowboy Killer. I, I appreciate like that. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so we also have later on in the show, Deron Payne will be joining us. Defensive Tack will be giving us another behind the scenes look from the team, what's going on in the D line, and much more. So let's get things started with the kickoff presented by Anova. And you can learn more at Anova.org. Anova, the official healthcare system of the Washington football team guys OTAs are over preseason training camp all over week one action is here and the Washington football team gets to take on the Los Angeles Chargers who haven't played their starters at all in preseason mm. so what are your initial thoughts coming into this week's matchup oh uh, I mean initially you know I'm just ready to go you know one of the things I've, I've always took pride in playing this game is preseason was used to really get myself mentally ready but come week one, you know, it's now it's time to take those real shots. You know, what I mean, um, you know, you try to make sure you come out, come out of preseason unscathed a little bit. You don't want to have no nicks, nothing that you're dealing with out the gate. But now, like I just said, out the gate, it's time to go. It's time to rock and yeah. roll. Yeah, so. it's time to roll, and it's time to roll against a really, really good formidable, formidable opponent. Right? Mm -hmm. We 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 talk about how dominating this defense is supposed to be. Right? How great they look on paper, being mm -hmm. us, the Washington yeah. defense. Well, a lot of people are arguing, push back. Well, hell, y'all ain't play really no elite quarterbacks next year, last year. Yeah. Mm. So this year, first game, yeah. you yeah. get a dude who won Offensive Player of the Year or Offensive Rookie of the Year. And, I mean, a dude who a lot of people are saying, and Justin Herbert, he's the next really great quarterback, yeah, right? And tough. so um, I'm, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for this test for our football team um, to really see how we stack up, you know, mm -hmm. see guys – Accept the challenge. I'm excited. Excited to see fans in the stands. Yeah. Excited mm. to be home. Um, excited to be a part of a football team. And Tan, I know you can attest to this too. A, a part of a football team that you feel like actually has a chance yeah. to really do some things. Yeah, you really have some hope coming into this week one. So, like, I just feel so good about this team. Mm -hmm. So good about uh, all the possibilities. You know what I mean? And so for me. It's the litmus test. It's 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 putting our best out there. And as a DB, you know, like, you know, I think a lot of people know me as the trash talker. But mm -hmm. I love talking trash because I wanted to get the best yeah. out of you. Right. Because I knew, like, and then you were okay, sure about yourself. I'm also. locking up. Yeah, exactly. I'm playing. Mm -hmm. So exactly. <laughs> I ain't worried about. Like, yeah. I'm not talking for this guy, yeah. and he has to go do my work. No, I'm talking, and I can't wait to see you line up there because I know. I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got you, babe. You got me, babe. And we going at it. Well, let's talk about on the defense side a little bit. Uh, you mentioned Chase. Of course, we've got the the matchup. Defensive Rookie of the Year going up against Offensive Rookie of the Year. As we know, last year, Justin Herbert was thrown into the mix. But even just the, the conversation around rookie quarterbacks, obviously he had an incredible year breaking mm -hmm. four NFL records. Uh, but we get that week one. You know, we're going right in. As you mentioned, There, there's no – Slow, slow ease into the season. From week one, you're getting a great matchup with a rookie of the year offensive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I awesome. mean, like I said, Justin Herbert is a, is a dude who last year showed you, like, man, this 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 kid can be special. Yeah. Can mm -hmm. he be the next Josh Allen? Can he be the next Patrick Mahomes? Um, I think a lot of those questions are still kind of out there. Um, there's no doubt about the season Justin Herbert had. You know, I push back and say. Well, hell, Justin Herbert's running a whole nother offense, a whole new offense. Mm -hmm. um, Justin Herbert didn't play in the, in, the, in the preseason. A lot of his guys didn't play in the preseason. And so, yes, if we're thinking this is going to be the offense of last year, oh, man, hold on to your seats. Um, and I think it, it's, it's going to be a little bit of that. But I think, too, I think they're going to be trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. yes, week one is a, is a test for everyone throughout the league. Yeah. But... But for a lot of these teams, they're going to be trying to really, really figure it out with their top guys and with the chemistry and with, um, you know, they're going to, it's on the job training. I could 100% understand that Brandon Staley, a rookie head coach, um, not wanting to put that prize possession yeah. in Justin Herbert and Derwin James, who, and you know, Bosa, we've seen be, guys. I mean, electric on the defensive side of the football, but just haven't, you know, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. So mm -hmm. he hasn't really had that opportunity. So how's he going to be used, right? How's Bosa going to be used? So it's so many of these variables mm -hmm. that you just don't know. I like our chances just, I mean, just speaking of Justin Herbert alone, 
um, seeing what he did last year. Uh, coming into this season, now you're playing this guy out the gate. You mentioned they haven't really played in the preseason. So that's kind of like a plus for us. Our guy should be ready for that. And even so, you know, now he has four new blockers on his offensive line. That's a plus for us, too. Those guys on our defensive front, they've been playing with each other. They, they've been practicing with each other. I'm sure they, that their, their guys have been practicing with each other also, but you haven't been in a live action with each other. So how, how, how are we going to make adjustments off each other, you know, in a game setting? You know, our guys are ready for that. And then, with all that being said, he's still young. So, you know, that jury is still out on him. You know, can you be that guy, you know, of last mm -hmm. year? And we have... That, you know, we have to say so to say, hey, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. Or I think he's had the potential to be that guy throughout his career. He's just that good to me. You know, I'm watching different things. You know, I'm a receiver, so I'm looking at how he gets the ball, you know, to his receivers and, and, and how he plays inside and outside the pocket. I saw all the things I needed to see to check off all those boxes. But now you get into a new season. By them not having to have that experience in a game setting yet, I like our chances. Have some pride about what what statements that you set last year and say going into this season we have to have that and carry that over every opponent's head when they come here it has to be tough for you well, let's see if they can defend some of that uh home field at FedEx Field this weekend. So uh, we do have to get into some more that's going on behind the scenes. So we'll be bringing in defensive tackle Deron Payne joining us. So don't go anywhere because we'll be right back with more on the Players Club presented by Pepsi. Our objective, our goal, to give you guys something to cheer for. We're going into this season, we're going to need each and every one of you and all your friends that cheer for the Washington football team. We need you here. Players Club is brought to you by GEICO. Whether you rent or own, GEICO makes it easy to bundle home and auto insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Kickstart your summer with a great deal on a Pilot, Accord, or HRV only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Imagine coming home to a place where the fun never ends. A happy community set in beautiful rolling horse country where the custom homes and villas are extraordinary and the Jack Nicholas signature golf course and other amenities make every day another reason to smile. Visit Creighton Farms and you'll see it's happiness on a grand scale. Jason, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? Cool. So what are you waiting for? Michaela Maroney to get your frisbee off the roof? I'll get it. Whoa. Here you go. Thank, Thank you, Michaela. Dude, get it. I'm not getting it. You get it. You threw it. It's your frisbee. Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. My work has been viewed by a hundred million people. My work helps save lives. My work has gone platinum. My work gives people hope. I work at FedEx. Take your career to the next level with one of our many open positions. Burgers, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome back to the Players Club presented by Pepsi. It's time for the Pepsi player profile. Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington football team. While well, we've got the man, Deron Payne, in the house. Welcome, it's nice to have you here. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be here. 
So we've got Alabama and Miami. Don't even bring that up. <laughs> Don't even bring that up. <laughs> you a woman. They are who we thought they were. Hey, they are what we thought they were. Yeah. <laughs> Monsters. All right, we won't talk about it. We won't talk about yes, it. But I do, are. since week one of college football, we just saw play out. Um, sorry, yeah. Santana. But I want to get into your Alabama days a little bit more. Looking back on 2018 specifically, all the incredible changes that you had happened that year. You win the Sugar Bowl. You are named MVP. You get drafted in the first round. You change your name, which we're gonna. I do. You, you got rid of the apostrophe in your name, no, apparently. I ain't changing. <laughs> some some changes, some excitement. But all jokes aside, looking back on that year, kind of take us through what it was like for you. Um, it's like at Bama, you gotta. It's like a, a deep room of guys you gotta compete with. So. When it's your turn, you, you got to step up. So it was just finally my turn, and and I got the chance to uh, show what I could do, and, and I made the best of it. And um, like as far as the name change, my name always been spelled without an apostrophe. When I was in college, they put they put the apostrophe in there because my brother, I got a, a twin brother, his name Darren, mm. and everybody used to just call me Darren. I'm like, no, nah, it's Duran, oh. and they did it like that. But it worked, so hey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay, well, I do want to actually take a look back on that place. You know, looking at your big play, as you got the chance to catch a touchdown oh, in yeah. that national championship game. So we actually have it for you here on the screen. Um, just take us back through that moment for you getting a chance to catch a touchdown. They're going to throw to him, pass to him. Ain't toe, toe drag <laughs> swag, huh? I ain't think he was gonna throw it to me. That boy agile. Look at him. <laughs> he holds it up. Let me nah, drag I have it. been I have been lobbying for it for three years. Like I walk past the uh, the OC door, knock on it, just lean in, just like you know I can catch right. You know, mm. they had me at fullback for a couple years, just blocking. I'm like, when y'all go give me the ball? And then mm -hmm. My uh my junior year, they finally put the play in. We had been running it all year, like at practice and. Uh, Game time, it was like, all right, we're going to run it. You ready? Got the ball. They had to do, do what I had to do. <laughs> but it came in perfect time because I had just caught a pick, like, the drop right mm -hmm. like right before. So mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, we're going to go and give it to him. What do y'all take into y'all post-college careers now that you you all in the NFL? Do y'all have some kind of camaraderie saying that, hey, you know, let's represent for Bama or let's see, you know, how we can dominate on this level? I mean, I think it's just all about just dominating on this level, like, you took having to compete in a room full of guys like five star guys and all that, not to NFL guys, everybody good. So mm -hmm. I feel like we just want to come out here and dominate. Y'all no. basically take pride then, just knowing that y'all can actually do what you did in college and be considered yeah. the best. And now you're in the league oh, and y'all yeah. basically considered the best. You oh, know? definitely, definitely. Yeah. It definitely fused the locker room talk. Yeah. <laughs> so let's you. fast forward then. Yeah. You talk yeah. about making yeah. plays in the NFL. Let's fast forward now. Talk about that defensive line, man. I think a lot of attention gets put on Chase, a lot of attention kind of on Montez. But as a dude who played corner, man, I love that pressure from the outside. But as you know, when you can disrupt that pocket up the middle, as mm -hmm. we've seen Aaron Donald kind of, you know, yeah. make a staple into doing that. I mean, how like how does it feel, man, to have to, to know Jonathan Allen, yourself, Deron Payne, Matt Ioannidis, and you still got the two Giants on the outside, man? Like how how confident do you feel going into football games? Make us, it makes us real confident going in, but then it's like the competition part just start kicking in. Like damn, these dudes getting sacks. It's my turn it's to go out there. You know, to go get it. I I gotta go out there and ball, but um. Just being able to look down the line and see them boys line up with you and, and know like, I know they go do do their job. So I ain't even got to worry yeah. about having to uh, pick up a little extra slack. I can just focus on a, my play. Is it a lot of trash talking though in that room? I mean, I don't think we like trash talk during the season, but I know after the season, like when it's all said and done, I know I get Jay, I be like, yeah, you got more tackles than you, got more, <laughs> got more sack, got more tackle for loss than you. And it just like, just like that. You were a first round pick. You won national championships. And I know there's a lot more on the table to go get. Mm -hmm. But a lot of young players don't make it because they yeah. don't they don't feel that kind of chip on their shoulder to keep getting. They better. lose their hunger. Mm -hmm. Where does yeah. that come from? I don't know. I feel like it just started from like high school. Like my coaches, they was they was on me tough, man. They was, they gave it to me in high school. They wanted the best out of me. And it just carried on to college. And and then I like in the NFL, it's just like 
every every game I go into is like, what can I do to become a better player? What can I do to make more plays? What can I do to, you feel me, just be there for my team? Uh -huh. And um, I don't know. I think that's what makes it like fun and just is like you always can get better. Like every every game, every day, like it's something you can do to get better. Continue to be selfless for each other. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I, I I would say this. Early in my career, I was a I was a selfish dude. He's a little you know, knucklehead. Huh? <laughs> I ain't never meet a fight. Like it wasn't about the team. It was about me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And as a dude who's almost 40 now and reflecting back on so much stuff along the way, you know, I think that's been the coolest thing as a former player. Yeah. It's been in these locker rooms and been a part of struggling teams yeah. to watch from y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It's like dog. Like, Which they get that. it. Yeah. You know Which what I'm saying? Had. Like they get it. They they didn't need two three years to figure it out. From the moment y'all step foot in here, bro, like all of y'all have seen to get it. And I think that comes from the top down as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From mm -hmm. having a coach like Ron Rivera oh, who yeah. played the game. You know what I'm saying? Talk about that a little bit. Because I know Nick Saban is his own mixed bag of tricks. And I love Nick. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm sure he, he left y'all pissed from time to time because I, I just know <laughs> how he is as a coach. Um, but how is it? To be around a guy like Ron. Coach, oh man, he's just he's got great leadership. Uh, like he a, a guy that you just want to uh, rally behind and 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 do whatever you can for him. Like when he, just from the first day he stepped in, I knew it was just gonna be like a change. Like you, you could feel like like I said, like the whole DMV feels different right now. Yeah. <laughs> and That's real. I don't know. I just I, I I love him. I appreciate him so much. I want to give you a chance to actually throw some shade on teammates as we're talking about love. And look, this is not in a bad way. We're not bad talking for that bad. But uh, we want to just take some time to throw some shades. Presented by Pit Vipers, the man respect and authority. You've We've got some you shades for all you. that time wiping them off for you, and then she goes and touches the lens. I lenses did that, like, you put fingerprints on the lens. I did. Yeah, I did prep the, the yeah, sunglasses you and everything. Them really nice. But yeah, you're right. You I, clean. He's clean. Boy, look yep. like uh, Ooh, Ultimate Warrior. So, <laughs> so we're gonna ask you some questions. Don't think too hard about it. Just All think right. about whatever name comes first. Go with it. Um, the first thing I want to ask you is, who is the corniest person? I'm thinking like dad jokes, thinks they're funny. JD oh. McKenzie. Really? Yeah. Don't <laughs> to put it past me. Yeah. I, I, I ain't really ever heard JD even talk, man. Oh. What, do you have man. an example? Is he, What's he do? It's like every day. He's just got something to say every day. <laughs> All day. All day, every day. Oh, Dang, man. I didn't even finish the question. You were ready with that one. Oh, the, oh, the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we all know there's weight room etiquette. You know, there's just the way you're supposed to go about how you're, how you're lifting, how you're training. Who's the worst person to be in the weight room with? Who's mm. annoying or just doesn't really Sweat on you? everything. Don't, yeah, don't wipe nothing like, down. Don't put their weights back up. Man. Everybody do pr such a good job. Y'all got a oh, good team. Dude. Yeah, yeah, everybody. Nasty. Nah, I mean, they keep it clean. Who's your D-Hall? Because I feel like you think. Probably Chris Baker. Yeah. Big swag, big, big sweat swag sweat everywhere man. on the bench. Don't want to wipe the bench down. Don't want to spray the bench. Don't put his weights up. I mean, God, yeah, bro. Like, if you don't put them weights up, somebody got to sure. put them weights up. That's for sure. A lot of them other guys didn't even lift weights. That's why we like to get out the Okay. You got any more? Yeah, I got another one for you. Do you like to play cards? Do you have big spades card game? I mean, I'll be, I, I jump in that game sometimes. Right? Anything? I play spades. Okay. All right. So who do you feel like has the worst, I'm going to say poker face, worst person to play cards? If you had to, if there's one person you would avoid, who would that uh, be? Probably John, John Allen. Just because like when he get, like if he, if he wins, he gonna let you know. Oh, he chirping? <laughs> yeah, he gonna let you know oh, for a couple of days. Like oh, oh, man. That's how it's supposed to be. We're gonna talk about it. He's a little petty about. with it, huh? Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, he's gonna work with it. It's the petty. Yeah, he gonna work with it. Oh, man. That's <laughs> Drake in him. You gotta act like that's not you. <laughs> nah. That's man. definitely me. Hey. Oh, oh my bit, goodness. A little bit. Nah. Yeah, because even, you know, when you win big enough, and this is anything, I would say, I'm saying cards, Monopoly, doesn't matter. You win big enough, then every time you lose after that, you can throw it back to that Our win. Our game was a yeah. little different, though. Our game had a little more at risk. So, oh, you know what? If you if you lost, you oh. shutting up. And if you won, you're going to shut up because that guy who, <laughs> who lost might be a little mad still. So. Yeah. You know? I, look, I got a story. I'm going to share a full story another time, bro. But let me tell you how they hustle me. So oh, I go boy. and buy a Range Rover right, from oh, the dealership. Boy. I remember Cash. Mm. Drive it to the little gambling game, to the game, yeah. the house game. At a, 
teammate crib. Mm -hmm. And I come in with you know, a couple bands in my pocket. I'm feeling good about myself. Yeah. I lost all my money in my pocket. I lost the keys to my range. Had to sign it over. <laughs> All in one night. And that's when I said, hey, yeah. <laughs> These dudes that's different, man. Yeah. These dudes gamble just a little bit different. Not everybody can gamble in the same zip code, yeah, man. So yeah, keep them cool. young, keep them young fellas with the with the, with the young pockets up out of y'all game. Yeah. Cause y'all got that long, that long, yeah, strong that money. money. That money a little different. That first round money. Deron, thank you so much for taking time to to come back to join us here in the players club and be able to chop it up with us a little bit about what's going on. And best of luck this weekend and this season. Moving ahead. I appreciate y'all for having me. Most definitely. Yeah. Yes, and when we get back here on the Players Club presented by Pepsi, we'll bring you more discussion what's going on around the NFL, the number debate, all the great stuff going on. We'll be back right in a moment here on the Players Club. The Players Club is brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington football team. Wings, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome to Toyota's national sales event. Ooh, RAV4. It's a great time to save on the 2021s while they last. Ooh, Venza. Toyota's got an exciting lineup to choose from. Oh, Highlander, could you? Oh, sure. You have to understand, it's the national sales event. Right now, lease a Highlander for only $2.99 a month. Or buy a Highlander or Adventure Ready RAV4 and get special low APR financing for 72 months, plus $7.50 toward your down payment. <laughs> hey, that's my line. Toyota, let's go places. I've been on my get back, top of bag slow. You would never see that. Use the trap though. Hey man, we're back. We're back. Hey, you got any more of those fast plays? Tons. Check them out. Cool. Oh. Um, you know what? We're gonna need a bunch of each. A bunch. Hey, thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. Fast play is fast fun for everyone. Oh, my peeps, look what I got! Hey, we'll play them on the ship. The Maryland Lottery has lots of fast play games, and some have a progressive jackpot. With a Honda in your garage, every summer adventure leads to another. Kickstart your summer with a great deal on a Pilot, Accord, or HRV only at the Honda Summer Sales Event. Nachos, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Welcome back into the Players Club presented by Pepsi. Now, D'Angelo and Santana, I want to get into what's going on around the league as we prepare for week one. So it's time for some hot takes brought to you by Geico. Whether you rent or own, Geico makes it easy to bundle home and auto insurance. And you can visit Geico.com to get more information today. So I want to get your thoughts on the number debate. I'm going to call it number debate. We had the plate <laughs> gate. Now All we have right. the number, whatever you. Um, so Tom Brady, has been, he's been chirping lately yeah. and, and in his older age. Uh, and he's complaining about the numbers because because now yeah. guys can have any jersey number. And I mean, for you, have both of you haven't played. What do you think about that? Being able to be able to pick your own jersey number. And it could be a single digit now. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I love it. I used to practice in, in a single digit just yeah. because, you know, for me, when I put on 23 or 21 when I was 21, like, it was it was game time, mm. and so I didn't like to practice in that jersey. So I practiced in what I wore in in high school, in college. Well, not in college, because college I was actually four. I love it. I love seeing those guys in it. I wish I could have could have you know had the opportunity to do it as well. Yeah, I don't think I um, would necessarily want to be a, a single digit. Once I got to this level, you know I'm old school, traditional, however Ooh. you want to call it. 
when I was growing up, I felt that in order to be a receiver in the NFL, I had to have an 80. Mm. I wanted one of those 80s. So I grew up, I grew up or be, way before I even can pick a single digit. You know, when I was in high school, I wore 83 because of the key people in the NFL that I like. You know, we had Mark Clayton for the Dolphins. You know, we had uh, so many other guys. I had uh, Terry Glenn, he wore it at Ohio State. Those are two guys that was my favorite. So I wore that 83 in high school saying that that's the number I want to wear when I get to the pros. What else you got for us? So as we wrap up, y'all got me thinking about something that I, I want to ask you real quick. Um, as we're looking ahead, because week one hasn't started yet. Yeah. So I feel like this is a great yeah. time to yeah. kind of see just how uh, much y'all you can see in the future and guess correctly. What are your early, obviously based on preseason, which as you mentioned, mm. is, is different. Yeah. I'm giving you, I'm stalling, giving you time to think here. Early predictions for the Washington football team in the division, but also in the league as a whole. Where, where are they ending up at the end of the season? I mean, it's, uh, whew. I mean, where are they ending up? I mean, heck, I think we all want them to end up in the Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, so, you know, that's where you would like this team to end up. But, yeah, I mean, just a realistic expectations for this football team, knowing everything that you have stacked against you. Um, you know, I don't think you can measure everything off of the success you had last year. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I think some teams have gotten worse. I think some teams have gotten a lot better. better. And those are the teams you're going to play. Um, I don't think you'll sneak up on anybody this time around. Everyone knows that you're going to bring this sickest defensive line to the game, yeah. period, as soon as you walk off the bus. And so, I mean, realistically for me, I expect this team to win the division. My expectations are not high, but I feel like they're reasonable when it comes down to just to what they showed us. Last year, to have a young team and go through all the things that we went through with the pandemic, uh, this team responded. They responded well. Also, it was a couple of games I felt like they could have easily won, but Coach was trying to find out who his team was. Mm -hmm. He was trying to teach them who he was and they found out later on throughout that season so mm -hmm. you know with all that said you have new guys coming here and a lot of them now trying to get to know coach but for the guys who's here and who was here last year they know what it takes and they're going to basically get those guys and corral those guys around them and 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 show them in practice and in games what he expects i think nine and eight should be something that's doable uh these guys might have higher you know expectations but i don't but i want to see competitive football they can go out there and show me competitive football any and everything is possible for this team well the wait is finally over week one action gets started and for washington football team fans of course be ready to check out that game sunday afternoon taking on the chargers at home and thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the players club presented by pepsi for d'angelo deron santana and myself renee We'll see you guys next time. And as always, check us out across all podcast platforms and on NBC4 Saturday mornings, 930 a.m. Have a good one.